Hey guys, I'm Special Aussie here, and these are the rules for the Celtic Scottish Players Only series. If you'd like to have a bit, of, bit more of an in-depth read through, I would recommend pausing the video here, reading through the rules. If you're pretty familiar with the series, you will have obviously seen the much longer intro that has been in the lead up to these episodes. So maybe go back and check out the longer intro where I sort of go through them in a bit more detail. And then we also have the goals of the series here as well. As you can see, they're currently in red. And every time we check off a goal of the series, the red text will turn to green text and that will symbolize the goal has been completed. Anyways, hope you guys enjoy the episode. Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. Welcome to episode 15 of the Celtic Scottish Players Only series. Now we are starting our second season here. And uh, as you can tell, I've made a lot of transfers. Of course, the regens came in the youth intake at, well, towards the end of the season. Uh, so we've decided to bring a few of those in. We do have a few senior players that we brought in as well. More just backup players um, to add a little bit more depth uh, because we were at some stages due to injuries lacking a little bit of you know third choice depth if that makes sense anyway uh, most of the players that left the club pretty much left either on free transfers or this guy also left as you can see he's Irish he was on loan last season uh, so he finally left the club to league rivals St. Johnston um, but the transfers in is the most important thing, obviously. Now, all up, we spent 5.25 mil, which is not a massive amount, but I feel like we've we've done pretty good business. And we start off with, here with Lee Farrell, a 15-year-old center midfielder, four-star potential, possibly even five-star, one-and-a-half-star current ability. And uh, I have to say, he's probably the standout of the youth players that we've actually signed, the regens. And uh, I have to say, I'm, I'm very ha happy we've got him in. Um, he's in the reserves. He's also going to play for the under-18s as well. He was signed from Hearts. So we have, you know, we've signed a few players from uh, some Scottish clubs. Uh, we also signed um, a player down here, Kieran White from Liverpool, who is also a Scottish region. Next player we've got here is John Gordon, another central midfielder. Can also play left, will kind of play left wing back. A um, little bit lower on the potential, as you can see there. Um, but overall, I think he's he's going to be a, a decent little prospect as well. And again, he's got some good passing, good tackling, pretty good uh, mentals there for a 16-year-old. Um, the only thing he's lacking in is probably his physicals. Does have, have good natural fitness, but apart from that, you know, the 9s and 10s with 5 strength, a little bit lacking. Uh, but he was signed for 40k from St. Johnston. We then brought in Kieran Slicker from Man City for 500k, 17 year old Scottish goalkeeper. Again, he's got a bit of potential on him as well. Um, not a regen, so he is in the City Academy. Um, looks pretty good, gonna be in the reserves. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. Of course, he's probably gonna challenge Angelini for that sort of backup goalkeeper role. Uh, I think Gordon retired. So we're, we, we're essentially lacking a backup, even though we got one of our lone players back from last season. We then have Kieran White, who I just mentioned before. Um, I signed him without really knowing his potential. Uh, we signed him for compensation. Lacking potential. I mean, his current ability apparently is only a one star as well. But on paper, I would say he looks like a decent prospect, despite actually having relatively low potential so I don't know he seemed good I, I sort of just went out on a whim 725k in compensation to Liverpool and uh looking back on it probably a bit a bit wasteful with that transfer probably need to be a bit smarter going forward we then brought in Finley Robertson from Dundee for 1.7 million 17 year old Scottish midfielder um had a relatively good year last season as you can see, he does look pretty good. Again, I'm not saying that he's got a lot of potential, but you know his stats are, are relatively good. They're, I would say they're average, but for a 17-year-old, they're actually pretty good because you would think that he's still going to develop a little bit more. 
So I'm happy with that. Again, relatively cheap, only 1.7 mil for a 17 year old of his quality, especially when we're lacking options, being only able to sign Scottish players. The next player we have is George Johnston. He was signed for 2.2 million from Feyenoord. And uh, again, he's probably just a backup for the backups, if that makes sense. He's a left footed centre back. I mean, he can play the cover role, you know, relatively well. And then he can also probably play a ball playing defender if we need him to do that. Um, physicals are pretty good for this type of league. He's also got good determination, uh, pretty average stats across the board for mentals as well, which is perfectly fine. And he's only 21 years old. Uh, we did loan him out, so he's not going to be with us for this season. However, going forward, um, we're going we're gonna to sell a centre-back that we probably shouldn't have signed in the first place, and uh, he'll come back next season from Livingston, and hopefully he'll develop a little bit while out on loan. And the final player we brought in uh, was a deal set up on a Bosman contract from halfway through last season in January, and that is Stephen Kingsley from Hull City. As you can see, I mean, I think I did actually show him in a previous episode. He's the emergency, emergency backup, so third choice left wing back. He's he's pretty good, I have to say. I can't I can't complain about him. 26 years old, he's got one cap for the national team. Two star current ability. If we need him, we'll call upon him. But again, not really too fast. He can play for the reserves if he's able to. Perfectly fine. All right, so the next thing we need to go over, of course, is the fixtures. We'll go over the preseason fixtures. Uh, of course, we have the Champions League qualifying rounds as well. Uh, but we started off with a 1-0 victory over Cardiff in a friendly. We then lost 4-2 against Birmingham. Uh, we then got Bukinost in the first qualifying round. Beat them 12-0. Yes, 12 goals in the first qualifying round, first leg. We then beat Exeter City. 4-1 in a friendly before the second leg of the first qualifying round. Um, surprisingly, they actually sort of came back a little bit. We actually got a 5-3 victory in the away leg. Um, they scored three goals. We scored five. Um, yeah, not a great goalkeeping performance from Angelini. I decided to play the youth goalkeeper there. Uh, we then went into the second qualifying round. We drew Cluj from Romania. Bit of a you know, more tough opponent to be versing this early on. Uh, the first leg, as you can see, finished 2-1. Uh, we also had a player sent off in Liam Henderson. But I would say it was a pretty tough game. They opened the scoring in the fourth minute. Christie got a goal back. And then a minute after we got the red card, uh, Griffiths managed to get the uh, the winner there for a 2-1 away victory. We then managed to beat Shrewsbury in between the first and second leg, 3-1. And then the most recent game played was a 3-0 victory against Cluj at home. A bit more convincing at Celtic Park, but, you know, there were no sort of slouch, you know, when it comes to the uh, the qualifying rounds. Uh, up next, we've actually got Videoton. I think they're from Hungary. Yeah, Hungary. Um, so, yeah, today's game is going to be a lower athletic, and then we're going to do the first leg against Videoton. Uh, the next episode will be Hearts, and then, of course, the second leg against Videoton. Um, just sort of kicking the season off. Then I think we're going to play a few games, and we might do Rangers and Johnston, or St. Johnston, sorry, for the third episode of this season. So, yeah, let's get straight into the lineup for this first game, uh, first league game as well in the Premiership against Aloha. I think they're newly promoted this season as well, so realistically, we should be doing pretty well against them. And we want to make sure that we we do things right. Now, other thing I need to mention is Ross Duhan is the goalkeeper I mentioned coming back from loan. Pretty dreadful, not going to lie, um, but he'll be the backup goalkeeper. Uh, and the other player, we, well, we got a couple of other players. We've got Henderson here, who is actually the brother of Liam Henderson, as you can see here. Similar type of player to him as well. Obviously, Liam's a lot better. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, is it Ian or Ewan? I think it might be Ewan. Uh, but yeah, he's he's got potential, to be fair. Either footed as well. 
just lacking a little bit of passing, but you know, he might actually be able to get up there. Uh, we're going to play him in the reserves for a little while to get his match fitness up. He might play some games. You know, we're lacking a little bit in midfield, but um, I think we do have enough to cover. Now, Danny Wilson is the player that I was talking about before. Uh, we signed his sort of replacement. Probably want to get him out of the club. His positioning is really low. And I just feel like as a, the backup to the backups, at 28, he's probably not going to really do too much. And uh, that positioning of 10 really scares me. Uh, the final player that we got back on loan was Ralston. Now, I didn't actually realize that we had this player. So him coming back from loan was very interesting because he's 21, got four caps for the national team, and he's relatively good. He's, uh, he's going to be the third choice right wing back, probably competing with uh, James Forrest here. Forrest is getting on a little bit. He's 29. So obviously we're going to need to replace him at some stage. Uh, but yeah, going forward, I think he's probably going to be the, the better option at the moment anyway. So yeah, today's lineup, we're going to go with Bain in goals, Sutar, Hendry, and McKenna as the center backs. We're going to go with Douglas as the left wing back, O'Donnell as the right wing back. Ferguson, McGregor, and Murray are going to start as our center mids today. And then Christie and Griffiths will be up front. The bench today is going to be Duhan, Kerr, Taylor, Forrest, Brown, Mallon, and McShane. I want to show you McShane. He's improved a little bit, and I'm pretty happy with that. Um, as long as he keeps improving, I think he can keep playing, to be honest. So here we go. All right, we'll get into the team talk. Tell the boys to play their game. And uh, I don't see why we wouldn't be able to beat a lower athletic in this opening game of the Premiership. Hmm, that's an interesting opportunity. Sort of looked like the Celtic player could have cleared that ball pretty easily. Anyway, we're coming away with it with McGregor to Christie, who's got the pace. Uh, but the shot is going to be blocked there. All right, we're 10 minutes in. Nothing really happening in this match so far. I mean, it is still the first game of the season. All right, we're starting to dominate a little bit of possession here. And the shots as well, we're up to five. However, the highlights are few and far between at the moment. All right, here we go. Aloha are in possession. However, O'Donnell does make a pretty decent tackle before sending a long ball up to Christie. Christie with a really tame shot there. Scully, the Aloha goalkeeper. Not even tested. Douglas with a nice corner there. And the Aloha players let it bounce in the box before Ferguson puts it in the back of the net. We do get the lead seven minutes before half time. As you can see, they, they let the ball bounce. And, I mean, it's a, a pretty easy tap in on the half volley for Ferguson. All right, I'm pretty happy to take the lead going into half time. Could there be another goal? Ooh, McKenna with a, a header from the long throw. Sort of hit the, the top of the crossbar there. All right, I'm, I'll tell the boys I'm pleased. I mean, we've had 15 shots, only six on target, which is not very clinical. I mean, Griffiths and Christie are... On pretty low ratings, 6.4 for Griffiths and 6.6 .6 for Christie there. Also got Sutar picking up a yellow card, so we'll ease him off. Of course, he's prone to picking up a red card. Christie in behind, one-on-one, -on -one, and he puts it away. Really nice goal there for Ryan Christie. McGregor, the roaming playmaker, getting the assist, which is good to see. But another, another long ball, to be fair. Straight over the top. I feel like they are really dangerous, the long balls. With this tactic, anyway. All 
All right, let's make a sub. Uh, we'll bring McShane on for Griffiths, and then I think we'll swap Christy and McShane around. I think Christy is better as an advanced forward. And obviously McShane is pretty much just a poacher. Uh, apart from that, I'm, I mean, Douglas, yeah, we'll bring Douglas off as well. He's a, he's a little bit fatigued out there. And I mean, I'm not sure if I want to start Taylor against Videoton. All right. Nearing the end of the first game here on the episode. Got 10 minutes left. Make sure you smash the like button, guys. I would really appreciate it. And of course, if you're not subscribed, make sure you do that. It's free. Hit the bell, the notification bell down there. It'll uh, keep you up to date with the episodes. And I mean, we have just conceded an absolutely comical goal. That is Sunday League stuff right there. Who missed his header? That's, uh, yeah, Hendry. Really, really poor. I mean, he was actually a bit of a standout last season. I mean, there goes the clean sheet. Only two shots on target. And I mean, they could have another opportunity, or we could have another opportunity. Christy again in behind. Oh, really good save by the goalkeeper. Oh, they've they've screwed it up. What a save by the goalkeeper, and then the centre backs for a lower, putting it on the plate for the poacher McShane. Look at this save with his foot. Bang, keeps it out. Graham, the centre back, gets tackled, and then McShane nips in and puts it in the back of the net. And we're three one up. And we have the uh the straight the straight dagger to the heart, I guess. They thought they might be back in the game, and then a minute later, we score another goal through a, a comical defending error from them. Similar to how we conceded our goal. Anyway, 3-1 victory there. Very happy with that to kick the season off. I think uh, Rangers actually lost their game. We'll have a quick look at that in the, uh, the league table here. Ah, uh, never mind. They haven't actually played yet. And I guess by al alphabetical order, they're going to be at the bottom. Fair enough. All right, what I'm going to do now is skip forward the four days and I'll join you with the lineup against Videoton. All right, so let's get into the lineup for Videoton uh, in the third qualifying round of the Champions League. Uh, we're pretty much going with the exact same team. Uh, mostly everyone pulled up all right. Uh, the only change we've made is for Dane Murray, uh, who actually played the reserve game as well. Um, Henderson's come in, Liam Henderson. Um, and then also we have put Johnston onto the bench for McShane. Um, as he also played in the reserve game as well. Uh, contemplated possibly bringing Scott Brown in, um, but as you can see, hasn't really been playing too well in these Champions League games when called upon. So I'm a little bit hesitant. Similar sort of deal with uh, James Forrest as well. So yeah. Uh, only player I'm a little bit worried about is McKenna. Yeah, let's do it. Let's bring Jason Kerr in for McKenna. And then we'll go with the uh, that line up there. Now, obviously, I'm expecting a win. I know we're the away team in this first leg. But honestly, we should definitely have enough about us to get the victory here today. And I sort of want us to make sure that it's out of reach for, for next episode for that second leg. All right, we've got Sutar picking up a, a pretty early yellow card. Like I said in the, uh, in the last game, he's prone to picking up a second yellow, so we definitely want to ease him off. We've got Christy here, and Christy gets the opening goal there in pretty good goal-scoring form. And uh, the assist going to Jason Kerr. Obviously, he's up there for the, uh, the free kick. And that's Christie's sixth goal of the season. Relatively easy there, beating the goalkeeper at his near post.
And uh, we're definitely starting the better of the two teams. Seven shots, four on target. We're 1-0 up. And they have literally done nothing. And we've also got a penalty there. Three minutes before halftime. Griffiths will take it. Not been in the greatest form himself. And uh, he's missed the penalty. Good save by the goalkeeper. A little bit frustrating, but as I said, he's... His form has definitely dipped. He had, a, he had a bit of a dip in form just before sort of the end of season run-in, the championship group. Um, but then he sort of kicked it up again. Anyway, we're 1-0 up. Griffiths is on a six match rating after the penalty miss. I'll still tell them that I'm pleased because, I mean, they're not creating anything at the moment, so... Anyway, what I'm going to do, we're going to take him off. Uh, Johnston on for Griffiths, and then Christie and Johnston can be swapped around. Uh, then we're also going to bring on Scott Brown for Ferguson. And I guess, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it for now. We'll keep that last sub just in case that has come back to bite me in the ass before. All right, 20 minutes left. Would like a few more goals, if I'm being honest. I might actually... Let's demand more from the boys. All right, we've got Douglas here. Can't even get a cross in. We've got Henderson to McGregor. Back to Henderson. He gets tackled, and Videoten could be on a bit of a counter-attack. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that guy's name. This guy, Kuhn, he's in behind. Kuhn. That's a good save there by Bain. It's like Kuhn Aguero. I wonder if he's actually Argentinian. That'd be interesting. Aguero, obviously an incredible, incredible striker. That guy's a striker as well. Anyway, I'm, the highlight might actually be for us. It's not. Anyway, we also got Scott Brown picking up a yellow card. I mean, that's pretty much to be expected. But yeah, I mean, it's could possibly finish 1-0. Douglas with a... a Fairly bad long throw in there. And now Videotin are, are coming forward again. Similar sort of attack coming from their right hand side. Although Kerr should deal with that. Goes back to Bain. And we might actually be able to build out from the back here. Sutar with a long ball up to Johnston. Can he finish? No, he can't. Straight across the front of the goal there. Bit of a disappointing shot, to be honest. And he wants a, he wants a pay increase. He wants a new contract. And I mean, he's been... To be honest, Johnson's probably been a less impressive when compared to Christie and McShane as well. Probably the least impressive striker we have. Albeit Griffiths is in bad, bad form at the moment. Anyway... That game was definitely lacking quite a lot, uh, but we do get the 1-0 victory. Like I said, the next episode is going to be both home games as opposed to today's episode. So we'll be taking on Hearts and then the second leg here against Videoton. So yeah, make sure you, you know check in. Make sure you watch the episode. And apart from that, guys, as always, take it easy and goodbye.